This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now from Studio B, your hosts, Spencer Linton and Blaine Fowler. Oh, it's a beautiful day. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere, Thursday, February 24th. Almost March. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with our dual threat analyst superstar, Uncle B, all-around good man, Blaine Fowler, who, by the way, is built to run in the snow. Well, you, you better be the last couple of days, right? <laughs> Was it supposed to snow for three straight days, by the way? <laughs> and, 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 and I know your reference is, is to uh, the, the post that Jack DeMooney uh, put out there from BYU football. Walk-on tryouts. Uh, yeah, walk-on tryouts. <laughs> The walk-ons were out there. They had all 81 <laughs> of them out there running in the snow uh-huh. on the practice field. So not just a look, look at, looking at speed and uh, agility, also looking at mental toughness, yes. no doubt. These right? are the run-on tryouts. Yeah, right? Run-on run, run tryouts. Bra- Brady Papinga tweeted out when he saw that, this is a football tryout? Are we sure this is not <laughs> the cross-country team? You know, so, um, but, uh, hey, you got you got to be able to play in the snow. Remember, I'm a New York kid. I grew yeah. up in upstate New York. Oh, you know all about it. If you don't play a couple of games in the snow, then it's not football season. And and when I was watching those guys run out there, I had a flashback, a flashback to 1985. Okay. And we're up in Logan playing the Aggies, and uh, and Robbie Bosco's our starter, and I'm the backup, and uh, we could see the clouds rolling in, and we start, and it's not too bad, and then somewhere in that first half. A blizzard hit. I mean, oh. a blizzard. And Robbie walks over to me and he says, oh, dude, my shoulder. And I go, no, no. <laughs> don't do not do this to me now. You want to do this at San Diego? Do this at San Diego. Don't be, oh, my shoulder's not feeling good now that it's snowing sideways. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, I, dude, I'm serious. I'm serious. I don't think I can go anymore. And so we, we talked to Holmgren. He says, listen, you got to go. You got to go the rest of the game now. So, so. We, we won 44 to nothing. Yeah. And uh, there's a huge advantage to the offense in the snow, which I just kept having Vysik and Hema and those guys just run out and run like little three-yard option routes one-on-one and throw them a three-yard ball, and then they'd run for 20 yards. So so Robbie and I in that game, um, we, we combined for over 400 yards throwing. We threw – BYU doesn't care if it snows. We threw 41 times in that game between <laughs> Robbie and I. And, uh, but, but I did. I saw them running out there. I had a flashback. I'm like, oh, man, I've played some games in the snow. Oh, even, Robbie. Even right here at BYU, I played some games in the snow. I told you you were built for the snow. Yeah, I'm built for it. I'm, 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 a, I'm a mudder. I'm a snower. I don't have any problems. Let's go. <laughs> here is your wintry show lineup. Believe it or not, BYU spring football begins on Monday. Wow. That is wild. Uh, it'll probably be indoors, Blaine. Yeah, and that's the beauty of having an indoor practice facility. You can get some <laughs> stuff down. You don't have to practice in a blizzard unless you want to. Indoor football for spring football, we think, for at least the first week. Defensive coordinator Elisa Tuiaki will join us to preview what schematic changes he's going to make. How much does the schedule matter? It's loaded for his preparations in February and March. And we go deep blue with... Triple A, Atiki Ali Atiki, can't miss that from BYU basketball. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Let's start with men's hoops versus LMU tonight. Men's hoops uh, tonight at 10 Eastern, second to last home game of the season. They're at home again on Saturday. The Cougs lead this series with LMU 20-5. to They last beat LMU on February 10th. Remember, that was that overtime thriller on the road, 83-82. BYU came back and won on the road. Uh, the broadcast will be on CBS Sports Network and a BYU Sports Network and BYU Radio. 19th ranked BYU women's basketball. They are in position to roll to an outright conference championship. They just got to take care of business on the road against Santa Clara tonight, 9 Eastern. BYU won the first matchup against the Broncos, 76 44. Blaine, they're dominating. It's time for them to send a message to the committee that they're going to continue to dominate. The, the team is way underrated, and they are really good. Really good. So, hey, let's move to uh, softball. Number 24 BYU softball. They're in California uh, this week for the Mary Nutter Collegiate Classic. It's February 24th through the 26th. Uh, the Cougs will play four games. The first one is today against Bethune-Cookman. They're currently 8-1 and one and getting it done. That's our expectation 
for BYU softball every year. They just win conference they championships. just win. So fun fact about this Marionetta Collegiate Classic, it's my old stomping grounds in terms of my professional career in the Palm Springs area. Every park there is patterned after a Major League Baseball park. It's really cool. Just on a condensed version because of the softball dynamics. Yeah. yeah. Very well, cool. Well, hopefully they get some good weather. I'm glad they're not playing up here oh boy. this week. So. BYU baseball also in better weather. They're in Phoenix taking on Arizona State, 8.30 Eastern. The Cougars? Hey, coming up, two-game win streak, including a nice win over Ohio State. They're going to be tested against the Pac-12 power today. And they had a nice little Florida trip, you know. I don't know why we didn't get to go do that. Right? Hey, Shep did. He's yeah. been in Florida, and oh, now he's yeah, in Arizona. Me. I heard all about it from <laughs> Shep. So. Um, hey, BYU football, a little news. Defensive tackle Tomase Lalile drafted by the Houston Gamblers in round 25, the United States Football League, the old USFL back up and running. BYU offensive tackle Corbin Kafusi was drafted by the Tampa Bay Bandits. I see Corbin almost every day working out at the gym, and he gets a lot of looks because it's a monster oh, of man. a man, and he looks like he's fit and ready to go. So the congratulations USFL. to two of them. The old USFL, that's where I signed out of BYU with the Memphis Showboats. Someone needs to ask President Trump about that. Well, and Houston Gamblers, Jim <laughs> Kelly was their quarterback yes, he back was. in the day. So. BYU freshman Adaobi Tabugbo wins the MPSF Women's Athlete of the Meet at the MPSF Indoor Championships. Congratulations, outstanding hurdler. Ed Eystone named the MPSF Coach of the Year. Nice. Ed just does. I mean, you were you were in school that, with Ed. That's, that's what Ed does, Another right? Another man built for the snow, yep. Blaine. Yep. Um, hey, how about Yoli Childs? Uh, he drops 14 and 11. Uh, 14 points and 11 rebounds, uh, five assists, and last night's uh, SLC Stars lost to Iowa Wolves. We need that guy to get a 10-day contract somewhere. Yeah, I mean, he, oh, man. I, I think that people think he's a tweener, but his arms are so long and he elevates so well. The guy can play. Let the guy play. That Give dude, him a chance. Somebody sign right him to now. a contract, right? Ashley Hatch, also elite, and playing with the United States women's national team in soccer. They beat Iceland 5-0. Ashley played 10 minutes as uh, the United States wrapped up the championship of the She Believes Cup. Big week for U.S. women's soccer overall. Yeah, and, and how about Ashley Hatch representing just over and over and over again? She's, she's been a great representative of BYU and getting it done on that women's national team. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. All right, Blaine. Should we uh, finish with something on ice just because it's this. fitting? Yeah, BYU hockey. Uh, they compete today in regionals against ASU at 12 Eastern, live streaming on Facebook. So they're getting it going today. And uh, and that's our headlines for today. All right, let's go. All rise and wow. shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. Learn more at bodyguards.com. Yes, we know, late February, the frenzy of basketball leading into the madness of March. And that means it's time for your daily BYU men's basketball resume update. Blaine, the Cougars are up two spots from number 53 to 51. Ken Palm holding steady at 53. That's down one spot. Team ranking still giving BYU just a minimal chance of making the tournament. 5.4% chance. That's very contradictory to what we see from Joe Lenardi in his latest bracketology. BYU's the second team out. The Cougars are still in essentially a third of the overall brackets according to Bracket Matrix. So somewhere in between the 5.4% and second team out, that's where we have BYU on the bubble. It's game night for the Cougars. They face LMU. They're a 13 and a half point favorite. They're supposed to win. So Blaine, my question for you is, are you more interested in what BYU faces this week at home, LMU and Pepperdine, or is it more about what all of the other teams on the bubble could do to affect BYU's tournament chances? I'm, I'm going to speak the truth to you here. I'm, I'm going to speak truth. Let's go. I've been spending a lot more time this week looking at everybody else <laughs> and looking at other games, trying to figure out where BYU's seed will be. Like, I'm making this assumption, and maybe it's crazy to do this, that BYU's just going to handle their business this week. You know, they beat these two teams on the road. Mind you, the LMU, who they had tonight in that first matchup, they didn't play particularly well. They couldn't defend to save their lives in that BYU was game. down 17 in the second half. Well, and, and they, when the game was over, LMU shot 57%. 
come on, how about a little bit of defense? And, yes. And, and, and you know what? There wasn't great defense played, uh, you know, in, in that second game of that week against Pepperdine, yeah. right? And so I, I look at those and I'm going, man, can BYU find some defense this week? I feel like they found their identity defensively a little bit against St. Mary's this last week. Um, and, and Alex, you know, I, I feel like Alex has, has, has found himself again. Man, pe- people have been guarding him hard. So with all of that said, I've just kind of assumed, you know what? It's home. This is the second go around. They're going to handle business this week. So I've been looking at, wait, who who are the last four in now on all the brackets? I need to root against those teams in the NCAA tournament. Where is BYU? We, we, they've been hovering that first four out this, this last week or so. And, you know, who's right there around them? I, I'm rooting for all of those teams to lose. I'm looking at the league and going, what's BYU's seeding going to be in the tournament? They could be as high as the three. They could be low as the six by the time this week is over. Wild. Most likely a five, in my opinion, But um, which is crazy. That's the lowest seed they've ever had. I'm looking at all these other things, and honestly, Spencer, because of that, I haven't focused on the game much on either of these games this week. Um, I will when they're playing tonight, but since I don't have to call it, yeah, and what I am going to be focusing on is: Are they significantly better defensively? And they better be, or they lose. But I think if they win these two games this week, they're right on the edge. Sure. And now we need to root for other teams to lose. Well, from what I saw against St. Mary's when BYU was playing on the road to Moraga, I anticipate they will be better on defense. That was a better version of BYU yes. men's basketball that ended up losing. Yes, but they played a much better game. Other than ball security, they had a lot of turnovers, but right, the defense right. was. Better. The rebounding, they out-rebounded the Gales. It was much better effort. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you. I'm looking at all the other teams. I do expect BYU to show up, take care of LMU, take care of Pepperdine. They'll win the last two games. They'll finish league play at 9-6. and six. But I am watching what Santa Clara does. Mm-hmm. I am watching what San Francisco does, speaking specifically about the WCC, because I want, and I've made it very public on this show, BYU, no matter how it shakes out, to just have the opportunity to face the San Francisco Dons in Saturday's quarterfinals. I don't care how BYU gets there. It needs to happen, Blaine, because BYU needs that quadrant one opportunity. And right now we see Santa Clara a half game behind USF. Santa Clara has two very winnable games this week. San Francisco still has to play Gonzaga tonight. Would you be totally blown away, though, if Santa Clara – so Santa Clara is at Pepperdine and they have Portland, right? Would you be blown away if Portland beat them? Well, I know that Portland's salty because Santa Clara Mm -hmm. said no to a game Mm -hmm. with Portland in Portland. It just, we're like, yeah, that's not going to happen. We have whatever issue. Like, the game could have happened. It didn't. Yeah. So I know Portland's salty, but I think Santa Clara's playing with some desperation because they know uh, if we win two this week, we're the three seed and we avoid Gonzaga. We don't have to play Gonzaga until the finals. We avoid Gonzaga. (laughs) So there is real desperation for them and they get Portland at home. So I think that gives them the edge they need. San Francisco is going to lose to Gonzaga. And then if they lost again on Saturday, they'd be the five seed and BYU would be the four seed and they'd play in the quarterfinals anyway. Well, th- and you think about that. If if you get blown off the floor by Zags and you have a little bit of a chink in your confidence, do you do you go out and struggle against San Diego on Saturday? That's that's not out of the realm that you could lose two this week. Now, I don't think they will. I think they get beat by the Zags, they recover and they sure. and they and they beat San Diego. I think Santa Clara wins both of their games uh this week. St. St. Mary's is going to go one and one. Because they're going to get they're gonna as lose good as they are. They Gonzaga. will lose to Gonzaga unless Gonzaga <laughs> just doesn't show up, right? That's how good the Zags are. Maybe the best. How many times am I going to say this, Spencer? This may be the best group of talent Mark Few's ever had. My goodness. Seems like we say it every year. Every year for the past five years. They don't. Reload's not even the right word. Like, some teams rebuild, some teams reload. I don't even know what we call what Gonzaga does. They respawn. Like, yeah, they die, and then they just immediately come back, and they're as strong as they right, are. Right now, they're sitting as the number one <laughs> overall seed. So we're just going to – but but it's going to be interesting. This is the tightest race that we've ever had, two through six yeah. um, in this conference. And anything could happen. St. Mary's is going to go one and one. I'm pretty sure of that. But but San Francisco could lose two. Santa Clara could lose that game to Portland. Not I would not be blown away if, if that happens. And so – We'll see. I've been I've been watching all of that, but then on a on a national scale, um, you know, the most recent update to bracketology has Michigan, Indiana, Memphis, and San Diego State. Yes. Um, as the last four in. That was before San Diego State just lost to right. Boise State. Right. And so, and here, here's the hard thing. Now you get really conflicted. You go San Diego State. Wait a minute. 
BYU, do we want them to win because it's a good because BYU beat them, or do we want them to lose because they're currently in front? I think now we just want them to win because I think BYU slides in front with that loss, right? Oh yes, you, um, you want San Diego State to lose. So we're rooting against Michigan, Indiana, and Memphis, Correct. right? And then in that first four out, uh, who who do we want to lose there? SMU right. and Oklahoma, right? I don't think Oklahoma is going to be a threat. They've got too many tough games down the stretch and just a loaded Big 12 that we are all very keen on and aware of because BYU is going to be playing in that league in a couple of years. But right right now, SMU, Oklahoma, along with BYU in the first four out, and then Michigan, Indiana, San Diego State, I'm Memphis. Like, you know who to root against, yep. BYU fans. And, I, and it's a shame because 16 seconds two weeks ago, <gasps> we're not even having these conversations, but we're having them now. Yeah. We're having them This now. is the reality. <laughs> Our question of the day. Are you with Blaine and me? Are you more interested in the two BYU games this week against LMU and Pepperdine at home? BYU is heavily favored. Or in what other teams on the bubble and around BYU and the West Coast Conference are doing that could affect BYU's tournament chances? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Our good friend and former BYU basketball player Skyler Halford chiming in on Twitter. Like you, he used yeah, the same phrase as you, Blaine. Not going to lie. lie. Like, we could lie about this. <laughs> hey, we're taking them one game at a time. Hey, Skyler doesn't play anymore. Neither do I. We're not doing it one game at a time. I've been looking at Michigan, SMU, Memphis, Creighton, North Carolina, et cetera, to see if they've lost their most recent games. That will continue. Thank you for your honesty, Skyler. We've always been a fan. And guess what, Sky? Even if uh, you don't publicly post about those games, we'll let you know on BYU Sports Nation. Yeah. We're happy so, to do and, it And, and here, here's the thing that nobody wants to admit. We, can, we say, hey, we don't play. We don't have to do the one game at a time thing. We can look at the big picture. Players also look at the big picture. Are you kidding me? They, they know where they're at. They look at that, but they say to make their coaches happy, just one game at a time. Got to focus on LMU. A, players are savvy enough to do both. <laughs> they can focus on LMU and look at the big picture. In our day and age, with multitasking and oh, everything yeah. that's happening in social media. Multimedia, multitasking, multi-social media, right? They got it all yeah, done. You can't, you can't block it out. So, Well, hey, coming up, <laughs> coming up, has Zach Wilson officially made it? Ooh, some uh, posts in the New yeah. York media, okay? Yeah. And BYU defensive coordinator Elisa Tuiaki joins us as we switch things up from basketball to football because, you know, spring football is right around the corner. What's his biggest concern about his defense? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. I know what it's like to be overlooked to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Assuming other identities. No, 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 no. I'm in too deep. I need to catch that laser dot. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 
BYU men's hoops host LMU tonight at the Marriott Center. Coverage begins at 9 Eastern tonight with Cougar pregame live with Greg Rebell and Mark Durant on the call at 10 Eastern on BYU Radio and the BYU app. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside Uncle B, Blaine Fowler, and it is our pleasure now to welcome in the defensive coordinator for BYU football to help us preview the spring edition of Cougar football, Elisa Tuiaki, coach. Thanks for hanging out with us during a busy time. We're, we're almost a spring ball, amazingly, and it's 21 degrees outside. Yeah, it's good to, good to be back. I feel like uh, football's been gone for a while, but enjoyed the time off, ready to go. This is a unique scenario because you as a team return a ton of experience and depth. So how will this spring football session be different maybe to some previous years just because you have so many guys in the arsenal? It's, uh, you know, when we lost all those kids in 2020 to the draft, um, just the install had to be really backed down for the for the for the youthfulness of the team. And now you know, we still got a lot of young kids that that need to catch up right now. But we do have a lot of guys that have that have had game experience that, um, you know, we're doing walkthroughs and stuff right now. It's really, really easy um, just because you have so many guys that are coaching and teaching and speaking the same language and and a uh, lot, lot farther ahead than we were last year for sure. You know, when injuries happen, um, it's it's devastating at the time. And last year, the linebacking core for your defense took major hits because of injuries. And now a bunch of guys had to play last year, and all those injured guys are back what does that mean from a leadership perspective and depth of that linebacker position? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, going into last year, it was the deepest and probably the best uh, position group on, on the defensive side of the ball. But now it's you get all those guys back, but you also get um, a lot more depth, you know, a lot more depth, just guys that are that are capable of going out there and playing, um, you know, seeing the game a little bit slower and, and uh, are able to contribute. And so it's going to be a huge, uh, huge step forward for us, at least with the backers and, you know, in the, in the other positions, there are a lot of young guys that, that got time and and uh, cer- certainly uh, be be huge for us this next year. Some big strengths on the defense coming back, as you just outlined. What's your biggest concern as you head into spring ball? I know it's still early, and we're still seven months-ish away from the first game, but what's your biggest concern at this point for the defense? You know, I think last year it was, uh, you know, getting everybody caught up, um, you know, physically, mentally, and all that stuff. And now it's more of a... Um, you know, just fine tuning things, you know, continuing to develop, but also just staying healthy. That's going to be a big thing for us is we want to make sure that we come out of the spring ball healthy with all the guys that are that are capable of contributing and, and going into fall 100 percent. How much does the, like off season strength training? And I know you continue to do training during spring ball play a role as we watched last year from from outside the program. Some of those early games. You guys just enforced your will on people, especially at the end of the games up front. And and pretty much everyone up front on both sides of the ball are back. Um, have you seen in this offseason advances in that in that area? And what's your expectation on, on BYU's ability to dominate the line of scrimmage on both sides come fall? Yeah, it's it's been good, you know. Um, like I said, when we lost all those, especially defensively up front for us, we, you know, we lost uh, in 2020, you know, Kyrus and, and – uh, uh, Bracknell back, Zach Dom, and all these guys that we lost, and so we split. We played with so much, so much youth last year, um, but um, you know those kids played in those games. Those games we're talking about, where we, you know, took on Utah, Arizona State, and Arizona, and um, you know was able to uh, really show some stoutness up front. Those kids played, which was huge for us. I mean, um, you know, we, we things started things started to look a little different as we started to lose a lot of those veteran linebackers. But, um, you know, those, those kids that played and took snaps last year, up front at least, um, they're bigger and stronger right now. You know, and they're, they've got uh, a lot more savviness when it comes to the game, and it's just going to be really fun to see them, see them this next year. Elisa Tuiaki, BYU defensive coordinator with us on BYU Sports Nation. Here's what I want to know. Is there somewhere in your contract where you get a bonus if you have, I don't know, like 10 guys injured and you still go out and win a game? Because it felt like you had to do that a lot. It was crazy. I felt like at times BYU were the walking wounded, yet you still performed. You found a way to win games. I think it's uh, a... <clears throat> You know, tribute to Kalani's culture and, and the things that, uh, you know, the buy-in from the kids. But it's, you know, unfortunately, uh, nobody really cares. You know, you, <clears throat> you go back and you look at uh, you look at a score sheet from last year, the previous year. Nobody remembers who was hurt. And nobody remembers anything. They just want to know, 
who won, you know, and so it's uh, about finding a way to get it done, and the boys boys definitely did that. Maybe I'll talk to Kalani about that. We'll call up the we, Kalani we'll clause where it's like, hey, uh, when you have so many guys injured and he's still doing his thing, Roos Chris, okay? If, Something like know, that. If, if, if you and I represented E, I'm convinced this contract will have all <laughs> kinds of things in it that would be beneficial. Yeah. Yes. So, the, it, the, the, the treatment from Kalani, I mean, just the, the quality of life and just being around him, it's uh, it you know you want to do as much as you can for the guy because he 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 does treat us really really well. Do you have any advice for him as uh, now he's going to become uh, a father again of a young child? You know, I I had uh, I don't know if you guys know I had I had five kids and then we had a I think a six year break and then two more, and you you go out of that stage of having kids and you forget that you're a little bit. Uh, girthier in the midsection <laughs> and so when you're sitting down and changing diapers it's just a little bit harder you know and so um he, he's got to start to lose weight so he can change the diapers yeah, I, you're sitting down changing the diapers is hard I, I'm, I'm in a different mode like no no diaper changes anymore except for grandkids but see when i know i've gotten too girthy is when i <laughs> I bend over to try to tie my shoes, and it knocks the wind out of me oh, yeah. because my gut's hitting against my legs. I'm like, man, I got to drop a few LBs. No. I can't tie my shoes without holding my breath. That's not good. So no, no. so we were talking newcomers to Kalani's family. Yeah, right? Hey, yeah. So, so newcomers um, that we'll see on this defense uh, come fall. Everybody knows, you know, the names Peely and Wilgar and those guys. But, but who maybe um, will we be talking about in the fall that people don't know about? You know, mo most of the guys keep up with the signing class that we have of high school kids. And so you'll, you know, um, Ice Moa and, and uh, Logan Fauna are, are kids that uh, were in this class that were recent graduates. But, you know, Bruce Mitchell is a kid. Bruce Mitchell and uh, uh, Brooks Miley, a couple of d tackles that we signed, um, you know, several years ago that went on missions, came back, went the gray shirt route and are, are with us now. And so... You know, we're hoping that those kids will be able to contribute, but they're, you know, they're they're both getting really, really big and strong right now, which is always one of the positives of bringing somebody in in uh, winter semester instead of the fall. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Bruce Mitchell. That's a name that uh, had fallen off the radar a little bit. He's he's the country strong boy. He's he's the good old boy. He's going to bring it for BYU football. Yeah, yeah. people don't, you know, when when Alabama signs a class, um, then those four star kids are are playing the next year right. for BYU a lot of that gets everybody gets excited about it a lot of them head off on missions then they come back and you guys have really gone this um, to keep these kids safer have made a conscious decision to say we don't want to play these kids when they come back right. we want to have them get a chance to get physical again and get healthy and stay healthy and so it's it's three or four years later and then they showed up and people are going oh yeah right and Mitchell's one of those guys yep. and, and Miley's one of those guys that we're going to see contribute in a big way on that D line that yep. people haven't thought about for a while that's right, right. right. so I want, I want to ask you um how much does next year's schedule affect what you guys install and and personnel decisions, scheme decisions? Do you look to the fall and go, whoa, our schedule's loaded up with this type of team next year. We have to tweak things a little bit. Does that come into play, and how does it? Yeah, for sure. You know, we, we've got a <clears> – going in going into every every uh, spring ball, you, you kind of look at the past. You, got, you look at uh, – what your schedule is looking like and and the type of uh, schemes that you're going to face as far mo mostly uh, personnel wise right so you're facing a lot of uh, 11 personnel teams and 10 personnel teams which we had I think in the previous uh, two years the the year where we went um, we went like crazy drop eight was I think we played like eight spread teams and so but um, you know when we start to you've got to have you've got to have all personnel groups ready just you know the one time we played Wisconsin just kind of just out of the blue it was a little bit different game and and uh, you've got to have your big packages ready for that and so all the packages have got to be ready but as you're um, you know sinking time you're allocating time into which packages you're going to develop um, how many calls you need what you need to do you know as far as just prepping the kids um, you know, you've got to make sure that you're not practicing 80% of your time for 12 personnel when you're going to see maybe 70, 80% of 11 personnel. Sure. And so, this uh, this next year, there are a lot, lot, uh, lot, lot more teams that are playing 12 plus personnel, so 12 personnel, 13 bigger teams um, that are that are a little bit closer to to Baylor style that that we're going to face, and and we've got to we've got to allocate our time accordingly. We're talking with BYU defensive coordinator coordinator Elisa Tuiaki. Coach, over the years, we've seen position changes like from one side of the ball to the other. And I can't help but notice a ton of depth on the offensive line. At times, is it hard for you to not be like, hey, uh, Coach Funk, um, 
he could be really good on both sides of the ball. How, how did those conversations take place when you're thinking about guys that could play multiple positions? Yeah, I mean, the O-line coaches through the years have been awesome. Coach Funk um, has been awesome to, awesome to work with. Um, you know, it's really just um, where, a kid, uh, where a kid projects the best at the, at the next level, uh, what his contribution level is right now, and does it make sense to move him? You know, and, and a lot of times, you know, not all, a lot of times, but every single time, those kids uh, have a say in just what's going on. I want to stick it out. Oh yeah, I think I want to try the other side, and and so we'll talk about it. And and uh, you know, th- those those moves are always happening. I think they should. You know, it's um, traditionally you always want to steal a defensive lineman to play O line because those those sometimes D linemen are a little bit more athletic, sure. and then you just put a little bit more weight on them. But um, you know, and, and you know, some of those kids that are playing on the offensive line we signed as defensive players, mm. um, and so. It's just uh, you, you, you kind of put them in where they fit in and, and uh, roll from there. How rare is a kid like Tyler Algier where you recruited him as a running back and then he wasn't getting playing time over there? And I know you guys went and said, hey, that kid's a freak athlete. If you're not going to use him, we'll put him on the field over here. And you did. And then and then they realized the, that they needed him back and he goes back. And, and my understanding, and you were on the inside, I don't, he was just like, hey, whatever you guys want me to do. How rare is that? And what is, how special was he as you kind of send him off to the NFL now? Yeah, that's um, his, his, he has a really cool story. You know, obviously everybody was a big fan, just a, a great, humble kid, um, you know, willing to play, play wherever he could. And, you know, so, sometimes a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, how fast, how fast he's come along, understanding playbooks, you know, on different sides of the ball. You know, defense is a little bit, a little bit uh, easier scheme-wise, but a uh, little, a little bit harder reactionary because we're we react to everything the offense does, and so we have to keep the schemes a little bit more simple, and and the offenses are a little bit, uh, you know, the playbooks a little bit thicker, and so um, sometimes it takes a little bit longer for an offensive player just to kind of catch up to where they need to be, um, and it's easier for us to just steal them and play them and then send them over, and you know, uh, Keanu Saliapanga was was the same way, you know, where played actually played a year with, uh, well. Didn't play a year with us, but was was with us on the defensive side, and then just ended up moving over, and just took him a little bit of time to get the playbook, and it's just kind of happened like that. But Tyler was uh, Tyler was just a, such such a fun kid to be around. All right, E, we'll finish with this. I got to ask you about Malik Moore. I'm hoping he gave you a heads up when he made his decision to switch from PlayStation to Xbox <laughs> because a bunch of BYU fans were kind of freaking out when he posted, hey, thanks for all the support, got a big decision to make, and then there was a green dot and a blue dot. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that he gave you a heads up that he was going to do something like this. Where where were you in all of this? So I, I didn't get a heads up, and I don't and I don't jump on Twitter. Um, <laughs> I have a Twitter account where I go, and I'll try to just see what kids are, are inboxing me and all that, but someone sent that to me. <laughs> Me. Someone sent that to me, and I know Malik enough to. I was just like, dude, he's just being a knucklehead, and and uh, so I, I actually didn't even know um, what you were talking about. I just somebody sent that to me, and I was like, yeah, you don't need to worry about that because they, there are a lot of people that worry that yeah. what, what's going on. He should, he should be in the promotions business because he did this phenomenal job of teasing <laughs> everybody, and then everybody was he had a, an audience that was tuned in. A what is he doing? Audience. And then he made his announcement. Then he made his announcement. So he's he's pretty good. That's pretty savvy. If he's, he's now Team Xbox. So he he he's he, we talked about that, and I went home and I'm like. <laughs> Gavin, what's up with Malik? And Gavin's like, nothing's up with Malik. I just talked to him this morning. I'm going, well, this would say otherwise. <laughs> He's like, no, come on, Dad. So, uh, Well, he got to deal with Wingstop, too. Yes, I he mean, did. I'm not, yes, that, he that kid did. is savvy at another level. <laughs> uh, I, I wish you the best of luck with Malik and all of those clever guys as you push forward through spring ball. Thanks for hanging out with us, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks, E. Elisa Tuiaki on BYU Sports Nation. All right, Blaine, what's coming up? Coming up this week's Deep Blue is with Atiki Ali Atiki. And I can't believe I'm asking this question. Is the BYU-Utah rivalry underrated? Why why is this in the show? We'll find out next. This is BYU Sports Nation. Luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. 
Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Hey family, if you're looking for something new to watch, stop scrolling and start streaming. BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together. From bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun, there's something for everyone. Binge entire series, experience all the feels, immerse in non-stop entry, and treat yourself to unexpected turns. Think you know BYU TV? We're just getting started. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. On the latest, latest BYU SN right now, our Cougs are being nominated for big awards and making it look easy. Meanwhile, it's not as easy coming up with just one nickname for a star <laughs> player. At least it's not easy for Kiki. Check it out on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. He is Blaine Fowler. I am Spencer Linton. This is BYU Sports Nation on a Thursday. To interact with the show and get content throughout the day, you know what to do. Follow us on all the major social media platforms, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Now it's time to whip it. The Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. Okay, I'm gonna, I get to start, right? Absolutely, okay. you're the guest of all. So, so Big Game Boomer mm -hmm. uh, put, uh, you know, puts the list together all the time. They list BYU-Utah rivalry, the BYU-Utah rivalry, as the second <laughs> most bitter rivalries on Twitter. So keep in mind, this is the context. Bitter and on Twitter. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So the second most bitter rivalry on Twitter. Yeah. Is that underrated? Blaine, I think that's fair. Uh, it's pretty. It, the vitriol is real between BYU and Utah fans on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I, think, I don't think it's underrated. I think that's pretty fair because I look at number one and I see Clemson in South Carolina. And I got a good buddy that works, uh, Tyson Hutchins is his name, for the Clemson Athletic Department. And he will happily back me up on this. That Clemson, South Carolina, well... Let's just say it gets R-rated very quickly on Twitter when it comes to those two. See, and hence the bitter. Like, because when I think of the greatest rivalries in college football, the first one that comes to my mind is Bama and Auburn. They're number eight on this list. So they must, must be more respectful. On, at least on Twitter. They must be more respectful I mean, Twitter. in person, they're, you know, destroying famous trees and whatnot. <laughs> like, that's a little more bitter. But, like, on Twitter. Yeah. So I think two, I think two's probably about right then. That's good. Okay. Pretty bitter for BYU-Utah. Playing with Corbin Kafu. Drafted to the Tampa Bay Bandits of the USL, uh, USFL, and Tomasi Lalile going to the Houston Gamblers. It prompts this question: What's your favorite USFL team? Well, I have I have a couple, and it's all historic, right? So, I, just for a pure name, I, I really like San Antonio Gunslingers, right? Sure. Um, but but Philadelphia Stars Bart Oates was a star back there and was a captain, and they were really good back in the old USFL days. So they have a place in my heart. Kyle Whittingham, my old roommate in college, he played for the Denver Gold, okay. and, and they're kind of close by. So, you know, may, may, maybe it's maybe it's the Denver Gold. How about you? you uh, so I, I just like the Tampa Bay Bandits, and this is even before Kafusi was drafted because I love the mascot and the name. And I, there was a 30 for 30 that came out a few years back on ESPN that was fantastic, and they did a little bit of a lengthy segment on the Bandits, and I thought it was fantastic. So I'm a Tampa Bay Bandits. See, I'll, I'll go with you. I'm going to go over with there's BYU guys. That's I never liked the Chiefs before. I love them now because Andy's there, right? And Danny's Anderson. there. So I'll, Zane I'll, Anderson. I'll go with you on that one. All right. So, all right. Zach Wilson got name dropped in one of the latest Hallmark <laughs> movies. So does this mean he's officially made it? 
Uh, I think showing up on the New York Daily News is probably more of a moment of making it for Zach. Mm -hmm. But, hey, Hallmark's, uh, they've got New York ties. I feel like every holiday movie has a New York spin. It's a big city character in New York City, and they go to the country to rediscover their roots and their parents. And one of their parents has died, and there's this unique romantic love interest. So, I mean, there is worth in that, Blaine, but, like, New York Daily News put him on the spot, first of all. Hallmark is just a little dressing on the top. But here, here's my thing. Having been from New York, when you are in Times Square on a full-size electronic yes. billboard, then you've made it. Yes. And I'm not sure that's happened for Zach yet. Maybe I missed it, but I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, has that happened? I don't think it's happened. His parents would know. I'll text Mike but and Lisa. Find out from Mike if, if, it, if it happened. <laughs> and if it happened, then he's made it in my book. So. <laughs> 19th ranked BYU women's basketball on the road for their final two conference games. What's the chance in these final two games, one of them finishes within single digits? We'll call it a close game. No chance whatsoever. <laughs> this this is the most complete basketball team I have ever seen, uh, certainly in Juddie's tenure sure. and maybe ever at BYU. They are good on the guard line. They're phenomenal up front. They have balance. They defend. They take care of the ball. They can shoot. They do every. This team does not have a weakness, and they wear teams down because they're deep, and and they're unbelievably uh, in shape. So, teams may stay with them for a little while, and then they run them off the floor yeah. in the second half. It's going to happen again this week. They're going to waltz into that uh, uh, conference tournament as a number one seed. They're way underrated at 19 in the AP poll. They're going to be underrated. 25 and two. But the fact that they're not a top 12 team is blasphemy. It's a joke. It's terrible. It really? So, uh, yeah, no chance. I'm with you. Uh, okay. They will blow it out in the second half. That's what they do. Awesome. Okay. So, caption this photo of the Kafusis with Kalani Sataki. Okay. Ooh. This is Bronson posted this. Um, and he just said, hey, great stopping by BYU football and seeing our guy. Of course, referring to Kalani Satake. Um, what, what's your caption for that one? Okay, I've got a couple. Uh, number one is elite middleman. Okay. <laughs> And then the second is shoe game strong. Look at the shoes that all three of those guys are rocking. Bronson Kafusi's got some hard to find Air Jordan 1 high OGs with Royal Blue in them. Kalani's rocking the Air Max 95s. I don't know what Corbin's wearing, but Corbin does his own thing, and I have respect for that too. Shoe game strong. Oh, uh, Corbin's a fashion icon as yes, well. Yes, he is. And, and let me just tell you when you call out a fashion. So, you know, and you say that it's good. That's big time. <laughs> I, my caption for them was the force between the trees because Kalani is a force for good. He's been a force in both of those guys' lives, and those are two giants. Kalani's a big dude. He he's looks not like small. He looks tiny right there. So he, he, yes. So my caption is the force between the trees. Uh, yeah, so. he's a uh, mini Kalani. All right. Hey, coming up, I finally get to show Spencer how to make a good yeah, double down yeah, pick. I need, I need yeah, I, like When I've subbed in and I haven't been able to pick them, it's been disastrous. Yeah, I, but I, this time, I, I I'll show you thank how to you. pick. I okay? appreciate your help. And the path from Tanzania to Provo in a deep blue special you can't miss with AAA, Atiki Ali Atiki. What a story. This is BYU Sports Nation. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. father started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Follow the ups, 
and downs of elite young gymnasts and an exclusive behind the scenes look as they twist, flip, and bounce their way to the podium. See the commitment, effort, and mindset it takes for these competitors to rule their sport on Gym Stars, on BYU TV, or on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 13th ranked BYU men's volleyball host number nine, Grand Canyon, in the start of MPSF play. Let's go. Time for the boys to end that losing streak. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B alongside Blaine Fowler. I am Spencer Linton. The man that you're about to learn about has traversed from Tanzania to Provo with a stop in Canada leading to an incredible connection with an adopted family. Atiki Ali Atiki of BYU Basketball has found a home a long way from home. This is Deep Blue featuring AAA, presented by Brady Industries, Simply Better. I grew up in Tanzania. Before basketball, I was playing soccer. One day I just went to the basketball game. I just started liking it. Been playing since I was 14, 14, 13. His family had dreams for him of, of having the opportunity to eventually come to the States and play basketball. He did it by way of Ontario, London, Ontario, Canada, where he was paired with maybe the greatest host family ever. He comes from a home with, you know, dirt floor. His family did not have a lot of money back home, so definitely very humble beginnings. But he is very, very close with his family. He was so grateful for the opportunity that he was getting, but he also remained very connected to where he came from, even just in his cultural practices on a daily basis. Atiki came to us in, in 2017. Yeah, I didn't know if it's gonna be like beautiful, it's gonna be cold, I didn't know anything about it, right? It was just Canada, Canada. But it was a big shock for him because he spoke very little English and different weather, different traditions, different family environment, different home environment. You know, he was coming from very humble beginnings and now he was in a home with running water. It was a big culture shock for him, but we we made it work. You know, we just embraced him. His teammates embraced him. Atiki's a pretty lovable individual, as you probably have all learned at BYU. He's easy to love, he's easy to embrace, and, and it made the transition a little bit easier. Yeah, they're a special family. It's like a good family, very good family. Yeah, they take care of me. Like, I get how much to say about it, but they, I just love them, you know what I mean? Like, they are a good family to me, and they just love me. I got a message, a text message from Coach Provenzano, who is his host family and his high school coach, just saying, you know, his dad had just passed away, and then he had been sick. And he, and he was, it was hard, right? It was hard for him. Not only do you lose your father, but during a pandemic where he can't travel back and be with his family, he can't be at the funeral. We did the best that we could. You know, we embraced him, we hugged him, we cried with him. Um, we tried to reminisce and help him remember. They always tell me, like, work hard, do your stuff, like, respect each other. So I always miss those things they told me. Yeah, and I want to make sure, like, I do them, like, I have to do them because the one my dad told me to do them. So, yeah, I just miss him a lot. I think he needed, uh, he needed basketball and he needed family the most. And we, we were it. I think it just gave him, you know, some place, some safe place to be, which was really, you know, important at that time. He doesn't know we're coming, so we're just gonna sneak up on him and we miss him so much. And I, he calls us every day and he keeps asking, when are we gonna come to visit? So this is gonna be a huge surprise for him. We're excited to do that. Oh, oh, oh. Who's that? Oh, my I was just seeing Jude, like, I didn't even believe it. I was Judy. 
that's Judy? I was like, oh man, I just want to give a big hug. So it was a big surprise, for sure, it was a big surprise, yeah. But it was good, so that means like, they love me. And... You got it, Judy, let's go. Five, one, three, one, two, three. Hey! All right, let's go. Contract, contract, contract. Leading up to our, our visit today, it was pretty emotional, just getting to know that we were gonna see him soon. We've missed him so much. You know, he's, as I said, he was with us three years, but it's more than that. He's a part of our family. You know, he calls me mom, he calls Alyssa sister. So we've missed him and, and I just didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how he was gonna react. And it just filled my heart up, really just to see him again and to know that he's happy here and I can see that in his face and his smile and know that he's in, a, in the right place. You think about a Tiki who has, you know, been away from his, his family for several years and has been taken in by the second family in a, a completely different and foreign environment and then has come out here on his own in a completely uniquely different environment where he's here now by himself. It was super powerful him to see uh, these people that have been so kind to him, helped him through so many difficult times. We don't have any expectations for Atiki. He is experiencing a once in a lifetime experience right here, right now, along this journey. He's had a million once in a lifetime experiences. And, um, you know, the sky is absolutely the limit for him. I have no doubt that he's going to go on to accomplish great things in whatever he does. But as long as he's happy and smiling and, you know, coming home for some of my mom's cooking once in a while, I think we'll be happy. We're just so proud of Atiki. We're just so proud of the way he lives his life, the way he's affecting people that he meets here. He's changing the perceptions of what maybe an African coming from Africa to Canada and the U.S. is like, you know, and and we love that. I'm not surprised by that because we knew, we know what he's like and we know what he's all about, but we're just so proud of you, Atiki. Just keep working hard, keep being yourself and being true to yourself and make your family proud. Who are you planning for? I plan for my family, yeah for my family. What a fantastic story and a fantastic smile, spirit, and energy that that young man has. Well, it, it's it's a phenomenal story, a great human interest story. But think about the fact that he didn't start playing basketball until he was 14 years old. Major and, upside. And kids in the United States start when they're in diapers, shooting hoops <laughs> on their little Nerf basketball. So his skill set is off the charts, and the potential is... Who knows, right? He could be an NBA champ. Sure. We just don't know yet. And so what a great diamond in the rough, but what an unbelievable story. Very excited to see how that progresses. All right, Blaine, what's coming up? Coming up, a rising shout-out to the grind. You bet. And game night double-down picks are next. Blaine's going to help me out. Yeah. Okay. This is BYU Sports Nation. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. 
with a free BYU TV app. I like it. The race is on. Go! Four teams powered by faith and driven to find family. With only their teammate, paper maps, and inspiration to guide them. Where are you? The contestants race for the ultimate prize. I am one step closer to knowing who my father is. The chance to meet their blood relatives and discover more about who they are. Relative Race, driving families together. Watch Season 9 on BYU TV or on the free app. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. This just in from ESPN's Joe Lenardi, the bracketologist. BYU men's basketball slips down to the third team out in his latest bubble projections. Not a huge fall, one spot down behind Memphis and San Diego State. San Francisco, one of the final teams getting a bye. We'll see how they move after they lose to Gonzaga. All right, it's game night, Blaine, so it's time for our double down predictions. For tonight's BYU matchup at home with LMU, we give two predictions about the game. Each one we get correct is worth a point. If you get both correct, get a bonus point for a total of three points. Uh, I'll read Jerem's picks. He says BYU is going to win by single digits. Interesting. Okay. Okay. It was a one-point game in LMU, but BYU is a 13-and-a-half-point favorite. Number two, he says Trevin Nell, Gideon George, and Spencer Johnson will combine for 33-plus in points, rebounds, and assists. When you combine those on average, they go for almost 32. Okay, so he's he's saying that Barcel's gonna get some help uh, tonight. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. Um, but let's talk about some real predictions. Like yours? Like, like mine. So, my, my first is that the bigs are gonna have a big night. I say that Foose gets a double double, and Loner gets the double figures in his scoring. Ooh, okay. So you, Caleb's uh, starting uh, to turn uh, a corner. Uh, yep. So a uh, Caleb and uh, a Foose big time night. And then my second is. Uh, that BYU is going to hold LMU to under 42% field goal percentage. Now, that's a little bit of a, a stretch because, remember, they're, they're shooting 45 on the season. Yes. And then the last time these two teams played back in February, or back on the 10th, they shot 57% from the field. BYU could not Big keep change. them away from the rim. I say defense shows up tonight, and they hold them to under 42%. I'm with you on that. In that ilk, BYU will hold LMU to 66 or fewer points. Oh, nice. The Lions average almost 70. They scored 82 against BYU the last there you game. Go. 66 or fewer. And Triple A, the man we just heard from in Deep Blue, Atiki Ali Atiki, he's going to score a couple of baskets, four points. Sports Nation karma. He averages two. He's going to go for four or more points. I like Atiki's right. going to score tonight. All right. Our question of the day. Are you more interested in the two BYU games this week or in what other teams may be doing or not doing that could affect BYU's tournament chances. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Stephen Hutchison on Twitter says, better have a BTO mentality. Not sure what that is. The next two games. Yeah, Bachman Turner Overdrive, the band. They, oh, they sang the song, Taking Care, Take of, care business. of Business. There you go. Taking Care of Business Glad every day. Here. There you go. Taking Care of Business. Anything going on around the basketball bubble won't matter otherwise. Control what you can control at this point. Just win, right? Good thing you had an old guy with you today. Thank know who goodness. PTO was, right? Yes. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. I'm going to give it to the Kafusi brothers. They're on the grind, Blaine. I love it. And the NFL, the USFL, they just work hard, and I appreciate that. Yep. And they're going to make it. You grind and you make it, right? So, yeah. Absolutely. Our thanks to today's guest, Elisa Tuiaki. Yeah, and hey, sorry, Dennis Pitta. We ran out of time again. The conversation continues 24-7. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, hashtag BYUSN. For Blaine, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Glenn Kozlowski. Go Kooks.